Another of Socrates' companions was a man by the name of Antisthenes. Originally a student of the sophist Gorgias, he came to adopt the ethical teachings of Socrates, particularly with regards to virtue, and is said to have never forgiven those who killed his master. Antisthenes went on to teach this particular aspect of Socrates' teachings, focusing specifically on virtue and its dissimilarity from common understandings of goodness. One of his students was a man by the name of Diogenes of Sinope, a character who would go on to be the seminal figure of the movement which Antisthenes founded, called Cynicism. The name Cynic has a rather different meaning to its modern definition of someone suspicious of all human actions. Historically, the name possibly appears to have been derived from the Greek word for dog, although this is disputed. However, the cynic came to appropriate this etymological smear by barking at those who displease them. The primary desire of the cynics was to live a virtuous life in accordance with nature. However, they strictly delineated between what was truly natural and what was merely conventional. This is the root of the shocking and intentionally offensive actions of many cynics who attempted to demonstrate the falsity of conventional morality. Some of these acts included public defecation and masturbation, living in filth and mud, and dressing in rags. Rather than wanton acts of indecency, the cynics were actively and trying through their own example to redefine shame. However, the cynics were not relativists with regards to virtue. Instead, through their words and their deeds, they claimed that there was a real good and we must get beyond convention to attain it. An apocryphal account of Diogenes holding a lantern in the day while searching for a good man is an example of both this search for virtue and the cynic's derisive view of conventional goodness and happiness. For the cynics, it wasn't merely enough to pontificate on such issues as virtue and goodness, but it was necessary to put it into practice. This focus on tangible action over theory dominated the cynic way of life, with a focus on attaining self-sufficiency and freedom from desire after surpassing convention. To the cynics, the path to this freedom was through annuement to pain. Hence they lived deliberately ascetic lifestyles, devoid of creature comforts, pleasant food, or even shoes. Diogenes lived in a discarded wine barrel, and his only possession was a bowl to drink out of. It is reported that one day he saw a person drinking directly from the river with their hands. As such, Diogenes grew mad with his own materialism and smashed the bowl, having realised his dependence on the object. For the cynics, this emulated the most admirable characters of Socrates, who was similarly known to walk barefoot. However, to Plato and the cynics, represented Socrates gone mad, focusing on asceticism without the intellectual beauty which his own system preferred. The cynic conception of freedom was not merely limited to freedom from desire, it also extended to the idea of free and frank speech. This is exemplified by a legendary interaction between Diogenes and Alexander the Great. Admiring the philosopher's style, Alexander approached Diogenes as he was sunning himself on the grass. Alexander spoke of his respect for the philosopher's commitment to his values and offered him any boon that the young king could offer. Diogenes' response? Step out of my sunlight. Other philosophers of the period, including Plato and Aristotle, cuddled up to power, seeking to instruct would-be kings and leaders. On the other hand, cynics rejected power, instead seeking to find virtue in their own lives. In an inversion of the Cyrenaic tale, this idea plays out in the story in which Diogenes is washing lettuce whilst Plato walks by. Plato, seeing Diogenes' poverty, tells him that if only he would wait on the tyrant Dionysus, he would need not eat lettuce. In response, Diogenes tells Plato that if only he learnt to eat lettuce, he would not need to wait on Dionysus. The cynics also put forward a political theory which was so radical as to undermine the very conception of Greek humanity. For the cynics, the conception of a person as from a particular city was yet another false convention. As such, they rejected the particularity of the Aristotelian conception of the man as a political animal, as an animal of the polis and instead put forward a cosmopolitan conception of the relationship between individuals and humanity. As Diogenes said, I am a citizen of the world. However, unlike the later Stoic conception, this was primarily a negative conception of cosmopolitanism, a rejection of the city-state rather than an embracing of a universal family of humanity. 
Through Diogenes, cynicism was transferred to his student Crates, and through Crates to one of the first female philosophers well attested in the Western tradition, Hipparchus. One of Crates' other students, however, was the more famous Zeno of Cetum. Zeno went on to found one of the most important philosophical traditions in the Hellenistic world, Stoicism, and adopted many of the ideas of cynicism, including freedom from desire, virtue, beyond convention, and cosmopolitanism, although modifying these ideas to suit his own philosophical agenda. The example of the cynics was also influential on later Christian conceptions of the ascetic, who lauded the cynics for their harsh self-mortification while simultaneously condemning these aspects which they saw as obscene.